Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. I sat down with David Larkins the other day, the line editor for Pendragon, and we spoke about the upcoming 6th edition of the game and what new and veteran players alike can expect. I'm going to jump across to that interview in just a moment, but first, please remember to subscribe to the Chaosium YouTube channel here. It helps us a lot, and it lets us make more content like this. Enjoy. Uh, so yeah, that is the million dollar question because... Uh, I have been working on the sixth edition of this game of Pendragon uh, for the last two years now, kind of getting it ready to, to bring it out. Um, you know, it's what Greg was working on, Greg Stafford, creator of the game. Uh, he was working on it uh, at the time of his passing. And basically where he had gotten to after several years of, of intensive work on it was uh, what I would call a first draft. And so it's mostly just been working with, with what Greg left us, which has been a whole mountain of, of uh, material. I mean, you can see on the bookshelf behind me there, those file folders. That's just half of Greg's paper archive uh, you know, that, I, that I was combing through. And I've got a wonderful team that's uh, been helping as well. And uh, you know, what we want to do is bring not only this new edition out, but also bring it to a larger audience. Of, of folks because, you know, Pendragon is, is such a great game and a lot of people, you know, uh, sing its praises, but uh, we just want even more folks to uh, discover it with this new edition. So uh, the first thing I've been focusing on is a starter set for the game. That's fantastic. Uh, speaking of starter sets, um, for those people who are going to be approaching Pendragon for the first time and who maybe don't know what it is, can you can you sell a, a, a complete newcomer Pendragon? What what's their experience if they could jump in? Right. So uh, you know, as the name would indicate, it's a game about playing in the time of Arthur Pendragon. Uh, so this is you know Knights of the Round Table, Lancelot and Guinevere and Merlin. Uh, you know your classic. Uh, matter of Britain, as they call it, you know, the, the cycle of stories that have been told and retold for, you know, 1500 years at this point. Uh, to me, that's one of the, the big draws of the game is that, uh, you know, if I may get a little metaphysical for a moment, uh, you really do feel like you're participating in this a cycle of legends that is far greater than than your own you know, experience, uh, you're tapping into something pretty, pretty foundational and fundamental. Um, you don't really need a whole lot of familiarity with the Arthurian stories to get into it. When I started playing, I didn't know very much. I, I knew I liked sort of medieval fantasy. Um, that would, you know, I knew who Arthur was, Lancelot, et cetera, et cetera. I'd seen the movie Excalibur, <laughs> you know, that was about it. Um, and then one of the great things about Pendragon is that it's a very immersive game you play knights. Um, that's the primary focus of the game. Everybody plays knights. And that might sound a little, you know, boring, I suppose, you know, on, on first blush, but really the part of the game, part of the point of the game is discovering what kind of knight you're going to be. You know, uh, are you going to be a chivalrous knight or are you going to be a, a, a knight who values practicality? You know, um, are you willing to pay the price to maintain your honor? Uh, you know, and the core mechanic of the game is pursuing glory. Glory is a measure of how well known and renowned your knight is. And, you know, obviously like slaying monsters gets you glory, but a lot of other things do too, like a perfectly timed speech in front of your lord or in front of the king might get you a lot of glory. You know, doing a favor for somebody can get you glory. Um, it's also a generational game. You know, you start out with a knight you get married, you have kids, you get a manor, maybe you get more land, your kids grow up, you play those grown kids as knights, you know, then maybe they have kids, so on and so forth, you know. So if you if you you can play the game as a one shot or as a small campaign, but if you really want to dive in, you can experience the entire sweep of the Arthurian saga and um, you know, have this experience of of building a legacy, essentially building a dynasty. That's fantastic. So on the flip side, from a veteran perspective, people who have maybe been playing Pendragon for a while, who know what to expect, what's going to be most exciting for them about the new edition? So Greg uh, labeled 6th edition his ultimate edition. You know, he wanted 
sixth edition to kind of be his final word on his vision of the game. You know, it's it's a game that has been, you know, uh, basically his magnum opus that he's been developing since the 80s. And uh, with every new iteration of the game, he refined it and, you know, made tweaks to it to bring it closer and closer to the experience he wanted to, you know, bring to the t uh, people's tables, you know, through the game. So um, there's nothing radical about the changes in sixth edition. It's just everything, you know, everything is just tweaked just, just so to make it just a little bit more uh, like, for example, there's a little bit more uh, what I would call authenticity when it comes to the experience of uh, weapons and armor and horses. You know, there's a little bit more detail there. Um, there's expanded rules for honor. So like there's there's new and exciting ways to lose honor, <laughs> right? Um, you know, like, like uh, oh, if uh, you find out that uh, your enemy is conducting a whisper campaign against your family, what do you do if you don't do anything you're going to lose honor it does, it's not it's not about you and they're not insulting you to your face but you know uh if you just passively let them smear your family name you know you're going to lose honor so just little little changes like that um veterans of the game will recognize a lot of these as things that greg had talked about on the forums over the years things like uh you know, modifying uh, bonuses from passion inspiration, for example, you know, the passions have been tweaked slightly. Uh, one thing we've done that's new is the battle system. Um, I've re rewritten that from the ground up with a lot of input from other folks, uh, longtime Pendragon contributors. Uh, you know, we just wanted a, a more sort of player character centered experience, you know, like the battles raging around you, but what is what's your experience there on the battlefield you know that sort of thing so there are some things that are new but i'd say like 85 percent of the game will be familiar to veterans but my hope is that they'll find the changes that are made you know pleasing and necessary so when players get the starter set itself as a product well what can they expect what's it going to be like what's uh what's it going to be made up of Right. So the start, you know, the challenge with Pendragon is because there's this dynastic element to the game. Uh, obviously, you can't really fully demonstrate that with, you know, a starter set like, you know, here have the great Pendragon campaign as your starter set. Not really going to work. Uh, but we did want to sort of demonstrate that multi year aspect of the game, you know, how things change over time. There's a part of the game called the winter phase where it's like sort of the downtime mechanic, you know, you you just kind of check in with your knight, see how they're doing, you know, um, if they're married, did they have kids that year? You know, uh, how's their economic situation looking, you know? And, uh, you know, were, were there any other interesting events that went on that year outside of the, the main scenario? Uh, because, you know, the conceit of the game is you have one sort of major scenario per game year you know so greg was actually working on kind of a, a little mini campaign which i've you know taken and you know polished up and added some some elements to and it basically takes you and this is this you know this this speaks to familiarity with the source material this was the other thing is we wanted somebody who is like yeah i've heard of king arthur period that's it that's all i know get the starter set this is going to take you through some iconic moments from the early part of the of the saga you know arthur pulling the sword from the stone his battles against the uh you know his uh, the enemy kings of the north you know um and uh, uh the foundation of the round table his marriage to guinevere you you will be sort of front and center uh participating in these events and having your own opportunities to leave your personal stamp on on these sort of legendary moments you know and just kind of experience it you know through through gameplay um so it's uh six it's a six year little mini campaign um that uh kind of you know i think gives a really good overview of the themes of the game so if you're if you're into it you can you know keep going with the game that's the other things we want we want modularity in our approach to, to Pendragon 6th edition. So you can buy the starter set and then just keep rolling with that. You know, if you want to buy other supplements, you don't necessarily need to go out and get the core book. Core book obviously is going to give you a lot more stuff to work with. 
Uh, but there's enough in the starter set that you can kick off a campaign. And, you know, if you wanted to pick up volume one of the great Pendragon campaign or, you know, some other supplements that we will be putting out and, you know, just keep going with that from the starter set material, you can totally do that. 